Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Together with these great partners, we are able to bring you quality information to help you reach your whitetail habitat goals quicker but more proficiently. Northwoods Whitetails Plot Doctor Harper Growing Solutions Scent Thief Real Wood Productions Ace Hardware of Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Hey guys, welcome back to the farm. Like I always say, if this is your first time here, guys, I surely appreciate you stopping in. If you're a repeat uh, subscriber and viewer of the channel, I surely appreciate your support. We are in food plot, uh, full swing of food plot season here. Uh, got done with some client trips and I'm off the road here for a short time. And as you know, uh, when you have a schedule like mine, you got to make hay while the sun shines, right? So we're going to go over a couple things here today, guys, that uh, kind of give you a progress report, report from the food plots on the farm here and uh, kind of what we're doing going into the fall uh, plot, or fall food plot season here, uh, trying to beat some rain that we've got coming this week. So as, much of you, as many of you probably know, we released uh, this year our, our food plot blends. Um, with John Comp at Northwoods Whitetails, and we have the first summer uh, blend is the Whitetail Driven Summer, and that blend uh, is divided, the country is divided in half just like it is with the fall and the summer and the fall. Uh, anything north of I-70 is our northern region, and everything, uh, everything north of that is our northern region, everything south our southern region. Um, so we planted the uh, Whitetail Driven Summer south here on the farm here in Kentucky, obviously. Had some thoughts going into the season about what was going to happen to the farm this year because of the system that I've built up until this point. So many of you know I've been playing with the no-till theory for a long time and that's where that blends are, are stemmed from. So this year going into that guys, uh, I knew that we may be up against a wall that we haven't been up against before uh, in the past on the farm here. Um, because last year when I was playing with a bunch of seed um, types and stuff like that and our bunch of seed pounce breaker and stuff like that um, knowing that we were going to release the blend that we have with John I reached out and got some which I know better but I reached out and got some uh, bin run cereal rye so uh, I know like I said I know better than that and I've never bought, I never put any cereal rye on my plots unless they are, um, unless they, it is certified. Well, down here in Kentucky, trying to find certified rye is uh, like trying to find a needle in a haystack. And I don't know why that is. Um, a lot of folks have, maybe have been run, but there's not a lot that, that's even tough to find. But even with that said, the rye in general was just not, you know, I, I couldn't find it. So I, I found a local mill here that had some the super clean bin run. Well, I bought it and I knew better because what happened, guys, this year is I'll show you. Going into the planning of the summer blend, I knew that my rye from last year, I didn't look great. I had two plots that it looked okay, but it was three, four foot tall. Usually it's five, four, five feet tall, right? and it just didn't look good in those plots by the time i was able to plant that summer blend in memorial day weekend um they had a lot of grass and a lot of weeds in them so we planted it and we went uh we we planted it crimped it crimped all that down sprayed with glyphosate to try to set some of that grass back again because i still am still trying to clean my plots up right and that helps, you know, lay that thatch layer down. And then we sprayed the liquid lime on, or liquid lime and fertilizer on from Plot Doctor, from uh, Brad Harper there at Harper Growing, Growing Solutions out of Montague, Michigan. Well, as the season progresses, the food plot season progresses, I see that my plots are way behind. Um, even though the drought, like I told you guys in past videos, I don't fret the droughts near as much as I used to. But uh, I had four day germination, no rain for 10 days, and some of the plots didn't respond. Now I've got two plots I'll show you that responded very well. Um, even regenerated some brassicas, a lot of brassicas from last year that were in, uh, in dormant 
um, under that thatch layer, which is really neat. We got a whole whole boatload of brassicas that I'm actually seeding now into. So with that said, um, we had about a 50-50 response. So remember that rye that I used last year wasn't from John Comp, right? And I should have got that from John, or I should have got certified rye to begin with, and that was my fault, and it it haunted me. Because what that did is, guys, is it let the grass and the Johnson grass and everything come in when that rye wasn't as strong. And then we had a problem. So that problem caused the a lot of the, the summer blend not to not to grow. I mean, it, it grew, but not not to my my liking. Right, the sorghum was way way back. I did have uh, I did get a lot of that stuff that's in John's soil builder. That's part of that blend um, in there, but not not the stand that I I wanted. So we are here. That brings us to now. So I'll show you some pictures along the way here, guys, as I'm talking to what the what the summer plots look like. And then we're going to bring you to the stage that we're at now. We are planning our uh, fall blend here. The fall, the whitetail driven um, summer, or the whitetail driven fall south blend. So what we've got, guys, I had a decision to make. I went around, got John and Brad uh, Harper there, uh, John with, uh, you know, uh, Northwoods Whitetails and, and, uh, and Brad with, with uh, the uh, Harper Growing Solutions. I got them both involved and I said, my, my soil samples that we turned in were great. Uh, Brad helped me break those down. We had a little bit of, um, you know, chem or, uh, calcium stuff to do, but not, I mean, it, they were great, right? So what we found is that bad thatch, that grassy thatch layer, what it did is it soaked up the one. We believe that it soaked up the, because I had so much of not the, the right stuff, I, I, it soaked up the liquid lime and the liquid fertilizer. What that did is when those plots were to germinate and then I didn't have rain for like 10 days on them and it couldn't get the fertilization and the lime, they died under the, it, most of it died under the thatch layer. So we talked about this year setting the thatch layer back a little bit uh, and still keeping that kind of that no-till method. Now you see behind me, I've got turned over ground and I'm gonna explain why we did this. So I've got some of these plots that we're testing that I actually uh, ran a cultivator, a field cultivator, two-row field cultivator over. I'll show you some pictures here, guys. And the idea is, is to perforate the uh, perforate the um, thatch layer. So perforation versus termination. So we're not terminating the entire plot because we don't want to kill all of our sorghum and and uh, you know our peas and beans and everything that's in that summer blend. We don't want to kill it all back, especially the clover. But we got to get some good seed to soil contact, and with that heavy, you know, not real good stemmy rye thatch, we had too much of that broad leaf thatch, and it just wasn't letting the uh, it just wasn't letting it breathe, right? It just it, it was choking it off too much. So now knowing that we've got the liquid fertilizer and that lime all soaked up into that thatch layer, the last two weeks the plots blew up, and the reason for that is is all of that that was soaked up in that thatch now started to it got to a point where it started to to release right it started to decay it started to put that green manure back in the system so that's why we decided to run that cultivator over and perforate kind of as a drill would just a more aggressive approach so my tool that i'm making with the aerator and stuff guys is not doesn't done yet so i elected to take the field cultivator I'm going to turn you around here. We're going to go for a walk. So this is uh, a spot here that I actually took the cultivator, and I did more aggressive here, right? You can see the thatch layer is still here. We've got a bunch of it still here. It's chopped up a little bit now. But we've got a lot of broken, a broken ground now that we didn't have before uh, here. So I did this end of it just a little bit harder um, just to see the difference. And then up here we did just that. We just hit it. Hit it lightly and it looks, uh, it does look a little heavy on the tillage part, but it's really not. Um, guys, as you can see these lines every seven or eight inches, one, two, three, you know, up through here, I just ran the cultivator across it once. A couple rocks I gotta get out of it there. Uh, we just, you know, broke it, broke that thatch layer apart without stripping all of it. So the cultivator actually just perforates right it just peels it 
puts a line in it like a drill would, more aggressive line in it, but it puts a line in it, neat nonetheless. So the thatch, one thing you gotta watch with a cultivator is it will grab a bunch of your thatch and grasses and pull it off. I wasn't really worried about it on here because the grasses that it took off, to be honest with you, was a lot of the Johnson grass that so they wanted it gone anyway. So, um, so yeah, so that's um, perforation versus termination, like we're talking guys just lightly. I guess you could throw that into um, maybe a, a uh, what they refer to as that light till, right? Or, or um, you know, that light tillage approach. So, as you guys know, I, I, I'm a firm believer about that is that I'm, and when you say no till, to me, no till is no till, absolutely zero till. But you got to kind of run, roll with the punches here. And I was dealt, uh, which it was kind of self inflicted. I just dealt a bad hand. I got myself into some. You know, trying stuff last year with the wrong um, seed that I just, that rye that I just depended on. That rye is so important. When you plant the rye in the fall, guys, that rye is so important for that the fall. It's an attractant, right? But it's so important for the next spring to have that good, solid stand of rye. Rye and wheat and all that stuff that generates. So you can broadcast or drill into it and you don't have to get to a point where you have to set the thatch layer back with that your nasty thatch layer so by doing this uh i probably irritated a little bit of the, the weed rootstock um but we're going to hit it with some uh, clethodim and so i don't kill all the all of the um, you know all of my uh, clover so we're chewing all that stuff up I turn some talk and i just look down this is kind of a testament guys so th these are brassicas actually from last year this, this is, uh, you know, we're in August. This is a brassica uh, turnip, actually, from from uh, last year's planting. Um, so this isn't something that we planted already. So that's just a testament of how great that thatch layer is when you can, you know, put it on there and soak it up and keep it soaked up and, and really keep that moisture to those plants. You know, what is that, six months or nine months of being under a thatch layer and and you know it reseeded so that's kind of where we're at guys i uh, had to set the thatch layer back we've got rain coming in here and uh next year now that we've got the the great uh seed products that we're working with right through john uh i'm hopefully don't have to worry about that rye problem again so i'm going to show you here guys i got some blend the, the um, white tail driven um south the fall south blend loaded here in this and then the uh, cedar i'm just going to show you uh so the the northern blend is a little hardier the southern blend here we can do some things down here of course uh, that's why we're doing that versus the other seed company that i was using for years is uh, i just feel that there's not one there's not one seed that you should be able to just buy off the shelf that covers everybody so uh there's they're similar our blends are similar guys but they're not the same um, so you're going to have some stuff, like I said, the northern blend is a little bit hardier. So we got rye and the wheat and our brassicas um, in here. Um, and the theory is, guys, as we set it back so the brassicas and the rye can grow together, you hear that all the time. Well, you shouldn't plant the two together. Well, there's some truth to that. You shouldn't plant them both at a full seed rate together. Uh, and the way I explain that is this, guys. If you if you think about this if you take a full let's say six pounds per acre of uh, brassicas and you have you know you get you get these um, you know uh, maybe let's say tennis ball size turnips and, and radish right if you get those that size with that amount of, of uh, planting what we're doing is we're getting larger turnip larger bulbs because we're putting it half rate because we're putting other stuff in there with it, you know. So we're we're giving the rye enough room to do the magic in the in the rootstock in the in the ground that it does, guys. Plus, build our thatch above ground. But we're also we're also separating that out a little bit so it's not too thick. So we're able to incorporate the brassicas into it, and you still reach the same tonnage. You just get there different. So whether you know instead of having, uh, you know, let's say. Let's just use, uh, you know, half acre and having X amount of tennis ball size uh, brassicas, let, you know, in, in that plot. You're going to have half of those, but you're going to have half the number, but you're going to have bigger bulbs. So you're still going to reach the same tonnage. So, yes, there is, like I said, there is some truth to 
not putting brassicas and or uh, you know your grains together but we have found in this blend uh, that we've been tweaking over the last several years is they do work together if you half rate them and uh, and then it's got everything in there the, the deal of this is guys is it's it's a it's a huge piece of the puzzle to have a very attractive uh, and healthy fall food plot but to me it's just as just as important if not more important to have a great stand of rye next year to cover that summer product up so i'm i've got great soil and i great soil guys in the in the spring and the summer makes a great fall food plot i really believe you can't have one without the other and i know there's a lot of folks out there that'll say don't plant the summer blends uh, we plant them for not only the the ground, but I'm also planting them guys for the health of the deer And the older I get the more I more I focus on both of those not just one or the other so this ground um, If you know it all guys you can see that how far that we've brought how far that we've brought this ground um, Forward it's just it's just amazing to me like I said I've chewed this spot up here a little bit because this was so it still had a bunch of brush and everything else in it and i just decided to to you know go it's 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 still uh, you know not not dissed but it's it's heavy heavy tillage heavier tillage i guess but you look at the the root stock here guys and this ground was not like this two years ago i when i first took my soil samples or tried to take my soil samples on the farm guys the first year so three this is the third year I could not take my soil samples because the ground was so hard that I couldn't get a probe down into it to take a soil sample, a soil sample tool into it. There's no point because it would only go an inch, not even an inch in the ground, and it was just nasty. Now a field cultivator can, can you know, can do what we had to have it do here. So we're going to seed this fall blend in at a rate of about 40 pounds per half acre. We're going to seed this in and uh, so uh, 80 pounds an acre is about what it comes out to, to be. We're going to seed it in and then we're going to cover it up. Uh, we're going to take the crimper actually because I do have some stuff out here. You know normally I don't crimp in the fall but all of this that I've run over with the cultivator. I'm going to uh, cover it up, but how I'm going to cover it up, I'm going to take my crimper and that crimper is going to act not only as a cult packer, but also as a crimper to make sure everything is that is standing is down. So make sure that we can use all of that, all of that standing product that we got up there used guys, because it's light and I'm not really losing anything. Uh, I'm going to lose some sorghum and stuff like that. Not much though. So this is the year to do that. So we are crimping in the fall uh, this year on, on these plots. So, right along with us, we're going to get the fall food plot, plots uh, put in. We're going, to, we're going to do some videos coming up here, guys, on some food plot strategies and, and why uh, we do what we do uh, with a cert, certain seeds that we use coming up here. That's one of the, blend, or one of the videos. But uh, here we are, um, getting close to uh, only about a month out or whatever it is now uh, from the Kentucky opener. So... Bucks are looking good. Velvet is, bucks are, uh, you know, really, really looking good. The velvet pitchers are all rolling in. We've got the, we were able to start feeding the first. Got the, the feeders out and uh, we've got some good deer uh, in the, uh, not only on the farm, but in the area this year. So looking forward to that, guys. It all starts and ends with, with a good food plot strategy. And this is our strategy going into this year. This is how we're incorporating our new blends.